Hi, I'm Lucy Hemmen, and I'm a clinical psychologist specializing in teen girls. Today I have my own teen with me, and we're going to talk about topics that often come up in my private practice office, and hopefully we'll generate some ideas for you to use with your teen daughters. Marley? Uh, my name is Marley Hemmen. I'm 19 years old, so I'm just finishing up my teen years. My sister is 15 years old, so that also gives me another perspective on the whole teen ageness, and I feel like I have a lot to say about it. Another topic that can be very anxiety provoking for parents is the topic of teen experimentation with drugs and alcohol. So we're going to cover that a little bit right now, okay? Mm -hmm. And so there's the mother perspective, um, and which is very different from a psychologist's perspective. And as a, as a specialist with teens and teen development, what I often tell parents is that it's very appropriate and developmentally healthy for teens to take risks and to move out of their comfort zone and engage in activities that may not make a parent comfortable. And as a parent, what I know is I want my child to be safe. And also, just as an adult in this culture, uh, I don't know anybody who hasn't been affected by addiction. And so when our kids start experimenting, if they experiment with drugs and alcohol, I think for a lot of parents there's that fear that, uh-oh, we might be paying for rehab instead of college or, or something like that. And that's kind of the most, provocative, uh, the most provocative scenario that often creates so much anxiety in parents that the way we handle it is either really unclear or it's ineffective. Mm -hmm. So. Um, I wonder what your thoughts about how, how parents can, can best deal with it. Because we have, we have those parents that say absolutely zero tolerance, no I've drugs, no alcohol. I've seen every kind of parent, I think. All of my friends, everyone's parent is very different in the way they handle it. And I think that's kind of why teenagers get so confused and don't know really how to step into this whole new world of being around alcohol and drugs and stuff like that. And it's because parents are figuring out how to deal with that at the same time as we're figuring out how to deal with that. At the same time, as a lot of teens are figuring out that their parents yeah. abuse alcohol and or drugs. Yeah. Mm -hmm. My biggest thing that I could say after coming back from my first year at college is that the kids that didn't experiment a little bit, I'm not saying that everyone should at all, but they're the ones that had the most problems and got and had, had problems during their freshman year of college because they don't know their limits, they don't know how to take care of themselves, and they don't really know what they're getting themselves into. And those are the kids that really would struggle. And it's such a fine line between like experimentation and then taking it out of taking it control. Too far. Yeah. Right. So you're saying the kids that had no, no, no. Uh, they went from zero to 120 on the party scale. Yeah, because sure there's no. nothing holding you back. You have right. the world at your fingertips, complete freedom, and no one to tell you not to do whatever you want. Yeah. And I think that, that what you just said taught me that when a, a teenager experiments with drugs and alcohol, it's not like parents get to go, yay, this is the best thing, but it might not be the worst thing. And it, I think that depends on how extensive it is mm -hmm. and also what the teen learns from it. Mm -hmm. and, and I have a teen client that is now in a very expensive university, and she said, why would I party now? My parents are paying $50,000 for me to be here. Yeah. And I did that in high school, and I learned from it, and now I really want to get a good value out of my education. So what she taught me is that what you might assume is is a terrible thing or a scary thing might actually be an educational thing uh, for for a teen. Definitely, I think there's a lot of learning to be done in high school where you still have a support system around you. You have mm -hmm. friends that you've known for a really long time. You have your parents around you, and in college you are surrounded by a bunch of people that you met a week ago, and you mm -hmm. don't really have that support system that you kind of grew up with. You don't have friends that you know, like I know they got my back, I know I've known them mm -hmm. forever, I can trust these people, you don't really know anyone. Not to make college sound like the most terrifying thing in the entire <laughs> world, but it, it's true, it's not, you're not mm -hmm. surrounded by people that you know have your back. Have your back. Mm -hmm. 
Mm -hmm. I also think there are two kinds of partying, and one kind of partying is sort of the experimentation thing where kids kind of move out there and maybe they blow it, or um, maybe it doesn't even come to the attention of a parent. And then there are the kids who are kind of the go big or go home kids that, that end up passing out or having alcohol poisoning, or the kids that end up do partying like that again and again and again. Mm -hmm. And those are the kids that I often meet in private practice because they're not really doing fun experimentation. They're, they're being driven by pain uh, that they want to escape from or numb or, or anger. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm sure, can you tell as a kid sort of that there's a spectrum, there's the kids that you, that you really worry about and then the kids that are out there. There's kind of the kids that want to have a good time. That's great. Like if you want to go and like have friends and be out and have fun, there's definitely the kids, not kids, uh, teenagers who are out there and they are definitely upset about something and they're drinking or doing drugs because they don't know how to handle other stuff. And it's kind of, it's hard to tell because when you're at a party, you're not going to really try and understand where everyone's coming from. Mm -hmm. I think it's kind of the one place where everyone just gets together and tries to have a good time. But for a parent, I can see how that'd be really hard to be able to tell the difference between those mm -hmm. two. Mm -hmm. Wouldn't, like one is definitely much more dangerous if you're experimenting out of pain or to cover up something else. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But I think there's a great like majority, not necessarily majority, but a great chunk of people who are just in high school, I want to have fun and hang out and experiment and mm -hmm. be a teenager. And a lot of those kids end up, most of those kids end up really settling down mm -hmm. and figuring things Definitely. out. Definitely. Figuring out how to make good decisions. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that for parents, we walk a line. I know one of my, I think parents need to figure out what their strong desires or expectations are. And I know what worked, what, what I feel very strongly about is that young teens should not party and should put it off as mm -hmm. long as possible. And I know as a young teen, I you never, were home. I was home every weekend. You were home a lot. And I thought, wow, this is really going well. Yeah. But then as you got older, you wanted to have more of a social life mm -hmm. and you were exposed to those environments where people were experimenting with drugs and alcohol. Yeah. And one of the things that was helpful for me is that I didn't know exactly what you were and were not doing, and I may never know, but I know that when I, when you came in the house, uh, you would check in with me and you would talk, and I assume that if a kid's really having a problem, it will be very apparent to mm -hmm. the parent um, upon greeting the mm -hmm. child, the teen. And um, at the same time, there are kids who just avoid going home. Yeah. And that... I think if your teenager just doesn't come home a during lot. the weekend most That's of the time, that means that they have another place to stay whose parent is much more lenient about mm -hmm. curfew and drinking and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But definitely, I remember being a freshman and feeling like seniors and stuff, we were about the same age, we're all in high school, but when I was a senior, they're way too young to be going out and doing stuff like going out to parties. I think. I was much more grounded when I got to my junior and senior year knowing that I kind of w was more laid back when I was a freshman and sophomore and mm -hmm. kind of had some downtime, had a lot of family time and had a lot more time not going out to make close friends that I knew were I could trust and stuff like that. And your connection was with those much kids stronger not, yeah. when you make connections with friends when you're not going out too much and when the emphasis is on having a good time like doing making brownies, making brownies yes. doing something stupid and not yeah. going out and partying because you're not going to make real friendships like that and i think have that's a big part of mm -hmm. kind of the partying mm -hmm. scene and what crowd you get into but i definitely think when you're younger in high school you don't need to be going out and partying and you may be mm -hmm. crushed about it and I remember definitely being like I want to go do stuff but now I'm so glad I that I didn't because I mm -hmm. gave me time to grow up be home mm -hmm. stay grounded make good friends and have a more realistic understanding of and enjoy it more when I was older like and don't you think freshmen make the worst mistakes that's when girls go to parties they have five shots of flavored vodka <laughs> they pass out 
And what I know is a lot of those girls end up losing their virginity or having something really, um, really hard happen mm -hmm. when they're drinking that wouldn't have happened if they weren't drinking. And, and I think that's, that's a, a real vulnerability. Younger teens tend to make worse judgment calls which makes sense, the yeah. older teens who have been around. And Seeing young freshmen out when you're 18 and you're in your senior year, it's disturbing, it's, mm -hmm. it's upsetting because to us, they are so young. To me, that was like my younger sister, you know, it was, they're one year older than her and mm -hmm. that's just, you don't wanna see that. And it's just sad. I think there's a lot of pressure to kind of grow up really fast and do everything. But if, if a senior in high school were to have an actual conversation with a, freshmen and kind of talk about these things, I, they, would n they would not think it was cool to go out and get mm -hmm. wasted mm -hmm. when you're 15 years old. Mm -hmm. It's not cool. That's why I wish that every, every freshman going into high school could have sort of an appointed senior and mm -hmm. then, you know, be Facebook yeah. friends or something and then check in. That would in. be super cool. I would, I would want to do that as a senior. I remember being like, I want to talk to you and tell you to be safe and not to do certain things right and that like doing that is not cool we don't care if you're cool stuff like that especially when you see what they're posting on Facebook I know you said I want to I want to message this yeah. girl and tell her to take this photograph down because I think that you have the perspective as an older teen that freshmen don't mm -hmm. have and they just end it's up it's hard and most of the time they'll figure it out and you're gonna you have mm -hmm. to make those mistakes in order to figure out what you need to do mm -hmm. to be who you want to be, like to not be that girl um, or that guy, I guess. And when you're a freshman, you don't know what girl you want to be. Yeah. You just want attention a lot of the time and you want to feel like you're mm -hmm. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think also for, uh, for drugs and alcohol, par we parents, we want to say, we really, I'd prefer you not do it. If you mm -hmm. do do it, I prefer you do it intelligently, um, which means when not, you're older. Yeah, when and you're we're older. We're talking about the older spectrum. Right. Well, also, I mean, some parents aren't going to be able to stop their young yeah. teenagers from partying. But to give the teen the message that, that you can't do anything, that would make me so mad at you that I wouldn't be there for you, even, mm -hmm. if, you, even if you blew it. So, so when, when parents have teenagers, I think they say, I can't control everything that you do, and I'm not supposed to and I actually trust you to mainly make great decisions, but you're not gonna make all decisions that I like, mm -hmm. and some of those decisions might even get you into a bad situation, and no matter what bad situation you're in, I've, I've got your back, you can call me, and you might scare me, you might make me angry, but mm -hmm. I always am dedicated to being there for you. Definitely, because so, yeah. so many people get into trouble because they don't really think that they can go to their parents when they mess up. And that's mm -hmm. when you, things kind of spiral out of control, I think, definitely, yeah. Or even to have a conversation, like a lot of parents can say, you know what, taking shots, not a good idea. Or taking multiple shots without, you know, uh, taking time to see how the first shot feels mm -hmm. can if you land shut, you in the hospital. If yeah. you shut your kid down, they don't know. We don't know what a shot is. We don't know that you mm -hmm. need to drink water if you're drinking. You need, like... You, that means you have to go out and figure that stuff out. Not saying that a parent should sh teach their kids how to drink, but you should give them information. Give them information and say, this is dangerous. This is like gonna hurt you. You can do this to be safe. I have a strong desire that yeah. you do not do this. Yeah. However, I can't control every move you make. And if you do do it, this is the information I want you, you to have. And you definitely said that to me before. And yeah. it made me feel like I had, like you were there to kind of almost protect me in a way like you were there but also you were giving me freedom to kind of make my own mistakes or make my right decisions or something like mm -hmm. that I feel like a lot of people just kind of want to shut it down and not talk about it and most parents I think can they think that they can keep their kids from drinking throughout high school and then even into their adult lives and that's just not realistic. I think some kids actually capitulate to the zero tolerant dem tolerance yeah. demand, but a lot of them go deeper underground and mm -hmm. then, then they don't have their parents as yeah. resources. Yeah, I think so.